So we in this video we're going to talk about glycogen degradation. So how do we degrade glycogen in order to get the glucose, right? So uh, in states where uh, we have low glucose and glucagon is active, activated, as, glu as well as gluconeogenesis, how do we get glucose? So I have a branched, like schematic diagram of of glycogen here and we're going to talk about how do we break it down to glucose so let's look at this uh, sequence right I want you to take a look at this uh, sequence right here these are alpha these are alpha 1 4 linkages up until here this part is actually alpha 1 6 right so the one that I have in red is my alpha 1 6 so we have this enzyme and I'm sure you've probably heard of it in your class it is called glycogen phosphorylase so we use glycogen phosphorylase and I want you to keep in mind we're looking at this right here so we use glycogen phosphorylase and interestingly it actually uses uh, glycogen phosphorylase it actually uses inorganic phosphate and uh, PLP now PLP is also called pyridoxal phosphate right so this is also called uh, pyridoxal phosphate which is actually derived from uh, this is actually derived from vitamin B6 so this is derived from vitamin B6 they're interchangeable so what occurs is that glycogen phosphorylase remove the remove these alpha 1 4 linkages until we reach what is called limit dextran so let me redraw this real quick so glycogen phosphorylase removes these alpha 1 4 linkages until we've reached a structure called this is called a limit dextran so glycogen phosphorylase relieves all these alpha 1 4 linkages and leaves about about four to five residues of glyco of glucose on the branching chain right remember we still have this alpha 1 6 linkage right here right so that's alpha 1 6 now at this point the debranching enzyme comes in and acts so the debranching enzyme in glycogen degradation has two functions right so I'm gonna put DE for debranching enzyme and in this case the first thing that happens is it's 4-4 transferase activity So 4,4 transferase acti activity, right? So the first part of the debranching enzyme acts via a 4,4 transferase activity, and what it does now to the limit dextran is that it traverses about four to five, about four to four to three residues to the growing chain, or not to the growing chain, but uh, to the longer chain and so as a result what we end up with is something that looks like this now something I want you to keep in mind before I go further is that glycogen phosphorylase and I'm going to write this in a different color cleaves and the products of glycogen phosphorylase is actually glucose one phosphate so these are glucose one phosphate and the key thing that occurs here is actually no ATP is used so no ATP used right so again the products of the cleavage of glycogen phosphorylase is actually glucose one phosphate with no ATP being used so going back to or structure here and stay with me now uh, for for the for for transferase activity has removed 
these three glucose molecules and add to the longer chain via alpha-1-4 linkages. Now, as a result, we have this one glucose molecule left, and it is again connected via alpha-1-6 linkage. So what happens next? The last activity of the debranching enzyme so debranching enzyme DE is actually a 1,6 glucosidase activity. So 1,6 glucosidase activity. So this is the second portion of the debranching enzyme. And what occurs is that it removes this last glucose molecule to free glucose. So as a result, we get the resultant structure to look like this. So this glucose molecule is actually released as free glucose. And then the cycle starts again. Glycogen phosphorylase comes, and glycogen phosphorylase comes, and form or limit dextran. Then the 4 4 transferase activity acts again, connects it to the longer branching chain, and then the alpha 1 6 glucosidase activity, the branching enzyme, forms free glucose. So, again, with following the, the mechanism, the most important thing you should know as well is that. The alpha one x uh, alpha one six glucosidase activity of the branching enzyme forms free glucose, whereas the gluc whereas glycogen phosphorylase actually forms glucose one phosphate with no ATP use. It actually uses inorganic phosphate, and this is actually important because um, quickly here, remember in glycolysis we actually invest about two ATP, right? So we actually invest about two ATP um, in the investment phase. Here we're actually using no ATP, and so in essence, what what I'm saying is that we're gaining more energy because we're putting in less to start with, right? So that's why it's important, and this is a mechanism of glycogen degradation.